Hello, it's David Vito Libido here, and today I've got the brand new Rama Works car to look at. I've got the iced version here, but I've also got the haste to look at in the next couple of weeks as well. I'm just waiting for some keycaps to be made for that. Yeah, I'm getting them made. The car is due to release in January 2021, and pre orders are currently being accepted on the website. I'll drop a link down below. The samples I'm looking at here are prototypes, but it's that close to launch date now. I expect to receive very very similar if not the same and honestly if you get this box that's well the main thing really as soon as i open this box the outside design i fell in love with it to be honest you've got 3d printers remote control cars you've got doggo you've got cameras you've got a suitcase to denote traveling it's basically my life all wrapped up in one and the attention to detail that you see on the box here now is actually carried on throughout the rest of the keyboard you've got a lot of little details that you'll see as we go on and it all starts with this beautiful packaging. On this box, you can actually see the layout of the keyboard, which is really useful. But let's get into the packaging and see what we've got. I'll go through these parts in a little bit more detail as time goes on. But in this first box, you basically have the parts that make it the ice version of the car. That includes a mute, a plate, and also the ice keyboard itself. We have got the haze version of this keyboard as well, which is the purple version. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous, but I do need to wait for some keycaps to make this one. So, unfortunately, you got the iced only this time. And we'll do the hazed version in the near future. In the second box, I've got everything else I need to make the keyboard. This doesn't include switches or keycaps, but in our case, it does include stabilizers. These stabilizers aren't usually included, but Ramawix does sell a starter kit that includes some novel key cream switches and also the stabilizers themselves. You are more on your own with the keycaps, but again, Ramaworks has thought about this and has given you a list of places where you can purchase them from as well. The main thing to remember with the keycaps is actually that you need a 7 new spacebar. This actually caught me out, I only had a couple here, and none of them really matched any of my sets. They're not particularly hard to source, but if you haven't got one on hand, obviously you'll have to wait to build the keyboard until you get them. Another thing that isn't included in the standard car kit is this optional interior dampener. This is just moulded out of silicon and it's basically just there to reduce the reverberation of the injection moulded case whilst you're typing. Alternatively, you can use a weight or actually nothing at all. It's up to you. Let's crack on and get the PCB out of the bag and start building the keyboard itself. The PCB of course is 60% and as you can see the surface mounted RGB LEDs. These are all individually controllable and having them surface mounted means you don't have to do any soldering at all. As well as the LEDs you've got some kale hot swappable switch mounts. Again this means you don't have to do any soldering whatsoever and you just simply push fit the switches in. It's nice and simple. I'm going to start the build process by doing the screw and stabilizers first. I saw Ramaworks do it like this so I figured it would be a good way to do it too. As mentioned, Ramaworks doesn't include the stabilizers in the package, but they can be purchased from them or separately anyway. Our stabs were in a bag with a switch puller, a USB type C cable, and also all the tools and screws that you need to create the keyboard. The stabilizers that Rama uses are Duroc screw and stabilizers. They're actually really nice, they look premium and with a little bit of lubing, which honestly I haven't done in this video, but I will do it in the future, they also feel premium. You can also mod these stabs, but honestly, I've never bothered with that, so I don't know if they benefit too much from it. I always try to build the stabilizers outside from the PCB if I can. It just makes it a little bit easier to do. However, it is quite difficult to show you this from behind the camera, especially with one hand. When inserting the bars into the stabilizers, I find it easier to kind of hold the plunger and then push the bar into the lower slot. It just clicks into place nice and easy and one of the mods I see often here is to tape the bars. I've never tried it, I've never personally seen the benefit but maybe I'll try it in the future and my life will be changed. At the moment though, I'm happy with the stabilizers as they are. They work, they look great and they sound great. I know I've already mentioned it but make sure you do put the bars in the lower part of the plunger. I have seen people try and force them into the top part which is to me craziness. If you put it into the top part the stabilizer just doesn't work. Uh, I, I don't get it. I've seen it though. I've seen people complain about it. People are crazy. What, what can I say? I don't know. 
points to stabilise his ability, it's simply a case of slotting them into the PCB with the clip side first. You kind of have to angle them in, but don't force them too much, they kind of slot into place and sit really nice once they're in the right position. Once they're like this, you can hold them in place and flip the keyboard over and simply screw them into place with a screwdriver. It's just a nice Phillips head screwdriver, so you, you should have one of them to hand. You want to make sure the screws are nipped up tight, but don't go crazy on them. You don't want to damage anything. Just nip them up and that's it. Once all the stabilizers are in place, it should look something like this. And as you can see, these uh, Durac stabilizers do match everything pretty well. For the next part, we're going to need the mute, which is a silicon sheet, and also the plate. You'll also need the screws and spacers, as well as the Torx drivers that are included in the package as well. When we were talking about attention to detail earlier, this is one of the places that really stood out for me. Even the Torx keys are labelled where armor works and it's telling you why it is, it's a T6 Torx driver. It's great. If you want to try and show off, you can put the screws through the PCB like this and try to screw the spaces on with one hand. I wouldn't recommend this though as only an idiot would try it and I'd probably use the driver that's included, the 6 T10 larger screws and the six standoffs and just put them on nice and easily with both hands like this. Once all of the standoffs are in place it's time to get the mute out. As mentioned this is just a silicon sheet and it just goes over everything like so. It kind of clicks into place but without the click. I don't really know how to explain it. It just sits really nice around all of the standoffs. Once the mute's in place and as snug as a bug in a rug it's time for the plastic plate to step up to the plate. Using the T6 tool and the 6 T6 fasteners, you can attach this pretty quickly. As always, don't over and tighten anything and you don't want to cause any damage. Just put the screws on nice and simple. Those that know me know that I'm a massive fan of white and orange, or orange and white, I'm not that fussy. And because of that, I'm going to be using these white and orange sherbet switches. These are actually from Kale and they're really, really nice. They're good in terms of colour, they're good in terms of weight, and they're tactile and have a massive click. What's more to want? If you're a linear boy, sorry, these ain't for you. As I mentioned earlier, the PCB is hot swappable, so all you need to do is make sure the terminals are straight on the switch and just push them through the PCB. If you want to see me do it from behind, <coughs> it's in your mind, not mine, then we'll do that as well. Again, you just make sure the terminals are straight and push it through. That's two of these switches inserted in real time, but nobody's got time to watch me do all of them. So let's speed things up a little bit and get all these sherbets into their home. My original plan for this keyboard was to use transparent keycaps to match the iced effect of the actual board itself. Unfortunately though, all my transparent keycap packs had 6.25U face bars and it just meant that none of them would fit this board. It's a bit of a disappointment because this board just looks amazing with just these uh, sherbet switches and it, look, it just looks right. Look, let's give it a stroke. Pretty. As transparent caps weren't an option, I fell back to my good old faithful white and orange keycaps. These are DSA blanks apart from the space bar, which is just a 7U space bar that I had kicking around. I've used these caps for pretty much most of my board, so there's no problem in using them, but it would have been nice to have the transparent caps that I originally wanted. If anyone knows where to get a transparent 7U keycap from, drop it in the comments, because I, I can't find them anywhere. Speaking of missing keycaps, you might have noticed I've missed off the escape key, and this is because I'm going to use an artisan keycap. This is something I'm going to try and do a little bit more moving forward and show off an artisan every time I build a board, or review a board. This time I'm using an artisan Meow Covid Kitty, I think they're called, from uh, Eskimo Keycaps. I'll drop a link to his uh, Instagram down below. Thanks very much for that. Make sure you always give your kitty a stroke. And uh, yeah, 
it's time to move on to building the board. The bottom of the board is held on by four further Torx T10 screws, so you can either use the tool provided or, like me, get out the iFixit kit or similar and undo them. The bottom of the board kind of pulls off with a click, so be careful of that. Don't think you're going to break it, it seems like it's intentional. And then underneath you've got a further four torque screws holding the back on. I thought that whilst everything was removed, it's a good time to actually attach the dampener. And this was just done by three screws. Um, it's a little bit of a shame that this board's so simple to put together. It doesn't feel like you're actually building a keyboard as such. Everything's just plug and play and screws is probably the hardest thing that you have to deal with. I quite like building keyboards from PCB level, so diodes and transistors and everything else. But unfortunately, this one's a little bit too simple. Not that that's a bad thing, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure most people are quite happy to have a nice easy hour to build a board. I quite like when things go wrong just so I've got something to do for a couple of hours though. Yes, my life is that sad and boring. Once the base of the keyboard's out the way, we can actually put the PCB into the top. It's a bit of a different one this is, the PCB doesn't screw into anything and instead the back of the board actually just holds it into place. It's a little bit of a strange one, I've never had a board that does this, maybe you guys have, but it works, it seems to work well. There are a few little issues with this that I'll show you shortly, but nothing too major. Before we put the board back together, we are going to attach the USB Type-C terminal. Again, it's not hard at all, it's just a case of attaching it using the four screws to the base of the board. Attach the cable and you're ready to put the bottom of the case together. It kind of clips in at the front and then you use the screws. I had a little bit of trouble with the front of the case, I think that was more of an issue by me rather than the case design. I'm a little bit of an idiot and I didn't really notice it had the slots in. I kind of just tried to force it together and it, it went in, it worked well in the end so I'm not complaining at all. Once the board's built, you can put the rubber feet on. The feet are pretty much the exact same size as the slot that they're intended to fit into, and I found it was easy to put one end in, then the other end, and then actually push the middle down in the middle to get them into place correctly. Before I did it like that, it kind of popped out one end or the other. Maybe that's my sample, this is a prototype, so that might be something that doesn't happen for you, but for me it happened. In the end though, it wasn't an issue and it looks great anyway. Now the board's done, it's time for some of them glamour shots that I see YouTubers use. And I must admit this board does look fantastic. The white and orange keycaps pop and it looks a lot better than I expected it to. I wanted to use the transparent keys and that just didn't happen. But I'm happy anyway so it worked out. One thing I personally dislike in keyboard reviews are type tests to show you what the noise is. Um, it, there's far too many variables for it to be anything sufficient. There's, different keycaps, different switches, different microphones, different preamps, different, there's just so many variables. Some friends have asked me to do one though, so I will. In my case, my mic is an Electro Voice RE20 powered by a DBX286 preamp. That's using a pre preamp, which is a Cloudlifter CL1, and I'm using a third gen Scarlett 2i2 interface. There's no other audio trickery or anything like that, other than a sound gate to stop you hearing my dog in the background. This doesn't affect the noise that the keyboard makes though as the microphone is sufficiently close enough that it doesn't actually make any difference. So let's dip this over repetitive music and do some tippity tapping on the keyboard. Enjoy!
So there we have it, uh, tippity taps on the keyboard so you can hear. In all seriousness though, the car does sound a lot better than the GMMK. There's just far less reverberation, it's a lot more muted, hence I'm guessing the mute inside it. And it just does sound nicer. It's not often that I actually care about the sound of my keyboard, I'm, I'm not that purist. But it is a nicer sound, I'll admit it. Now let's move on to some of the little niggles that I found out about this keyboard. One of them's quite simple. If you push on the very edge of the PCB, you'll push the PCB down. This is due to having nothing really holding it up and it just kind of wiggles. It only happens if you push on hard enough and it's not a massive issue. Like when you're typing, it doesn't happen at all. The same thing with the case is because it's made out of injection molded plastic, it twists a little bit and moves a little bit. It's to be expected and to keep the price down, it's not an issue. It's just, I have to say these things because if I don't and then I get moaned at after it, I can cover myself. It's fine, it doesn't affect the way the board works at all, but just be wary of it. Getting back into the positive vibes, the RGB lighting looks very, very nice indeed. I quite like how the top of the board doesn't get covered in RGB lighting, but all of the keys around does. It's a really nice look and from below and the side, everything looks great. I can't commend them enough for this and Ram has done a really good job. I think having the ABS here makes a big difference. You don't have to go full unicorn puke and in fact mine's just set to a single colour white. The white's sufficient enough, it's got a little bit of a pink hue to it, but it's nothing much at all. You can also change the colours to do other things and be reactive and all that kind of jazz, but I'm not massively into the RGB hype so I just set mine to white when I can. The car can be configured using QMK and that can be done on the website via terminal or via the via configurator. I'm using the configurator because it's just a lot easier to use for me. You can do pretty much everything you want in the configurator. You can set any key to do anything you want. That includes running a macro. You can set lighting. You can set special keys, you can set layers. It's pretty impressive software. You may have noticed that the Cara has a non-standard layout and it's a little bit more aching to the happy hacking keyboard style of layout. This means that you've got no controls on the bottom row, like you haven't got no left control or right control, and instead the control key is where the caps lock button is. Using the software here though, you can change all that around. Obviously you can't add the control key, but you can move it to one of the bottom rows and move things out of the way. It's completely up to you. Personally though, I'd give this layout a chance. I've used happy hacking keyboards for a number of years and once you've got used to them, it's a really nice layout. You don't have to move your hands as much to reach the keys. Like how often do you use caps lock anyway? You only use it to be raging on the internet. Just chill out more and you won't need it. You don't have to use the VIA configurator to configure the car keyboard. You can instead download it from GitHub and just compile it like usual, or you can use one of the configuration websites. It's entirely up to you. I just prefer the VIA configurator because it's easy for idiots. Well, that is the Kara keyboard from Ramaworks. It's an absolute beaut, I'm not going to deny it, and there are a couple of niggles like the PCB pushing down. That could be something I've done wrong, no doubt Ramaworks will tell me off if I have, and if they do, I'll post here, or I'll post a comment to say. I don't want to show them before, just in case they try to influence me. I'm sure they won't, but it's just their personal preference of mine. 
but yeah it's i've been using this board now for over a week i think just under a week maybe it's it's solid it is a solid board price wise the car comes in at 119 pounds which is about 130 euros or 160 freedom dollars that includes everything you've seen today except the switches the keycaps the stabilizers and the dampeners you have to purchase these separately the dampeners are about 33 pound 50 37 euro or 45 us dollars there is a weight instead that you can buy which is about 63 pounds which is 70 euros or 85 dollars personally though I, I i like the dampener i like how it sounds i like how it feels so it's a good worthy purchase and i suppose that's the big question would i buy one of these well yeah 100 percent okay there's some little niggles that i've uh, i've shown you but there's nothing that's game breaking at all once you're typing on it and once it's on the desk you get very very little in terms of problems and everything i want to do with it i can do it it's it's fantastic um i'm actually going to be looking at more rama works keyboards in the future hopefully because this has really really turned the leaf for me i wasn't a massive fan of, of rama work stuff because i thought the bezels were too big but now i've used one for a while i, I think i'm converted well done guys And that's where we're going to end this one. Thank you for watching. If you watched, if you can, give it a like and subscribe and all that balls. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and stuff, the links are down below. I need to make my ego bigger. So if you can do that for me, that'd be fantastic. Well, that's it. Thank you very much. See you in a bit. Bye.